you guys to begin. Uh, if you guys want to open up like a basic text editor. Um, so when you create a website or a web page, you always want to start with um, doc type. Doc type. And then HTML. And um, let's see if I can increase the size.
So basically that's your, just like the title of the website. And then you can do an H2, just for fun. It's really awesome. Just kind of to give it more information, more or less. Um, and then from here we have some other basic elements, which is the paragraph tag. And um, what you do with the paragraph tag is basically if you have block text, um, you can uh, you want to wrap it within a paragraph. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some. So in um, graphic design and HTML, we have this thing called lorem ipsum, which is basically filler text. And you can get a bunch of uh, generators all over the place that just like has so that you can just copy and paste it for when you're creating a document. Um, if you're really fun, you can do hipster ipsum, <laughs> which I'm going to do, in which basically you can do, it'll give you four paragraphs of hipster and Latin. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in here, just so that we have some text. And let's clean it up. You want to close your tags. So here we have our basic web page. Um, so we have four block paragraphs with hipster in them. And we're good. Um, let's see, what else do we want to do? So um, structure is very important in a web page. Um, and nowadays the shift is to make your web page as clean as possible with um, it only being the structure. And so you don't want to do any kind of like styling within your web page more or less. Um, so here we would put um, article. We're going to wrap all of our text that we have so far in the article tab. Tag or to go. And um, so basically, the new specification of HTML has defined several new tags that are more descriptive. And one of them is article. And basically, what you want to use the article tag for is um, your co main content of your of your um, web page, so that it, if it needs to stand alone, you can have it stand alone. Um, so actually, for our article, we're just going to want to put it with the paragraph elements, since that's the bulk of our website. And then for our header information, we actually have a tag called header. Um, and again, it's basically it's just a tag to contain your header elements. Um, and these notes are, are really good for when you want to do um, styling, which we'll get to later. Um, but they won't output, you won't see anything extra. Um, like, yeah, it didn't really change, but it changes the structure. Um, when you're on a web page, this is a really good thing. What you can do is in your view, uh, here in Google, it's a developer view source um, on any web browser that you're looking. You can uh, view what you have on the web page um, so that you can like copy more or less of like other websites. If they like do something you really like, you can see what, it, what they actually did in the web page. Um, so that's what the view source is really good for. Um, so you can go with anything like hip, hip, hipster gets them. Source. You can see more or less this is what their web page looks like. So that's a really good tool so you can kind of figure out what they do. Or my favorite in uh, uh, Google Chrome, well, on most in Firefox, you can do it, I think Opera as well. If you right click on an element and then inspect element, you can down here, it opens up the developer console, and you can see where in the web page this element actually is. And so you can see a little bit more specifically of what it's doing, how are they doing it, and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. So let's see, the page, just my body here for it. All right, so with the header, we also have a footer. So at the very bottom, there. So footer. I can do this way. Um, so in your footer, you want to put like legal information, like terms of Terms and conditions, privacy policy, contact information. So 
what I'm going to do is do a paragraph element. And then they have, there's these things called um, entity characters. So basically, if you want to do like the copyright symbol, um, it's basically, it's the ampersand, and then copy, and then semicolon. And what that will output is the, oh, I can't see it. Um, Here, if you pause for a sec, I can fix the projector. Okay. Basically, an aside is more or less reserved for if you have a figure, like a picture or a chart, um, you would put it in here. So let's go ahead and put in an image. Um, let's go find an image. I don't know about you guys, but I really like Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> so I'm going to find a picture of Scott Pilgrim. Um, and you really want like your images, if you're going to have an image, you want to make it more or less less than 500 pixels by 500. Um, so I'm going to do more bridge tools. Size. Um, oh, there we go. Right there. That's okay. I like this. That's not the one right there. It's because it's larger. larger. <laughs> just kidding. Go to, uh, or just do, if you do medium, that'll be the sizes you're looking at. Right. matter where we save this file? Yeah, so you want to make sure that your um, files are in the same directory. So for me, it's my desktop. So I have my test HTML page and then my image. Um, and you can, like, it's good to organize them into, like, you have an images folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Just new folder, images, and then I'll throw my image in there. Um, and then here, so we have our image tag. You have four different things. You have source, which is going to be the source of the um, image. And it's always um, relative to what your document is or where your document is. So for instance, we put our images in our, our image in our images folder. So we're going to put images and then the name of the file. Yeah, and matches. Okay. And then we want to do width. 
I'm not sure what the width is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this. It's got, oh, there it is, dimensions. So 450 by 360. So 450, and then height, 360. And so basically these are telling the browser that the image is 450 pixels by 360 pixels. And it's on the inside, so we can view the web page right now. Do you have a question? So if you put something other than the actual dimensions there, would it resize the image or does it just screw things up? Yeah, so if you put the other dimensions, um, you'll resize it. So if we wanted to do like 200, it'll sh um, squash and stretch more or less. Um, and you can if you wanted to not put them in, it wouldn't hurt. It just puts in the actual image itself, like the size. Um, but it's better to put the dimensions in there just, just in case the image is actually much larger, much smaller. It's just like you know for sure that it's that size if you put in that width. Um, and then you also want to do, when you have an image, you have the alt tag, which is basically for if you have a screen reader, um, so people who are blind, if they're accessing the web page, it's good for accessibility so that if there's an image, it'll actually put in whatever you have in your alt attribute. Um, so here we'll just put Scott Pilgrim being awesome. It's also important for secondary punchlines in your webcomic. More or less, yeah. <laughs> so like if you actually um, refresh the page and you hover over it, Maybe it's the title attribute. Yeah, so it's there. Um, you can title. So you can in Google, you get like edit the web page right here. Um, and so yeah, there you go. So it's the title attribute that makes it um, do a, a hover over. Uh -huh. So we have Scott Pilgrim, and we have some hipster text. Shaping up to be an awesome website. Um, Alright, so we have so we have the paragraph elements, so that's more or less just like a block paragraph. What you also can do if you wanted to make it break halfway in the middle, you put in a BR tag, and that's just like it just doesn't want to break. So if we look back on our website, it will break here. Um, and just return it to a new line. What happens if you just put white space directly in the HTML? If you put white space, it'll um, condense it down into one. So you can put as much white space as you want, but it'll just like, take it down. Um, if you wanted to preserve white space, you have these tags called the pre tags, which is pre formatted. Um, and so, like, if you wanted to like have some like artsy poem that like has creative line spacing, that's what you would put in. But more or less, it condenses it down to one. Um, let's do links. Links are fun. So to do a link, we'll do fixie. And it's called the anchor tag. Um, and then you start with A and then href, which is the um, reference link. Um, and then you wrap it. So what you can do is if we have a second page in our website, you would just do second page.html. And so it's always relative to wherever your web page is. So basically, our second page.html would be on my desktop. Um, and that's how you do a relative link. And then if you wanted to do in um, Salvia, why not? Uh, href. To do an external link, you just put in the link. So we'll do. You can just take the link here and then you can put it there. And so basically you have, um, that's how you do an external link. You just like throw in whatever it is. Um, so that HTTP, it tells the browser that it's like on the internet. Save it and look at the testbook page. So we have our um, link here. It's currently broken because we don't have that page yet second page on HTML. So if you click it, we get um, 404, or you know, let's say not found. Awesome. And then for our external link, we put Salvia. 
you click it, it'll go to Wikipedia. Um, so that's the links. Um, with links also, if you wanted to make it do some awesome things, you do target, and then that basically tells the web, the web page where to put the link. So if you wanted to open it into a new tab, you do target blank, and what that will do will just open the link into a new tab. Um, and then there's also, I think, parent and self. So like, self, that forces the link to open within the web page, within the tab that you're in. Um, and then parent as well. I'm not quite sure what you would use those for, but if you wanted to like force it to. Um, but I generally, whenever I make a website and it's an external link, I generally do links. So that it's just a new tab because you don't want them to leave your website because it's awesome. So you just want to make sure that they are new tab. Um, let's see. Articles, A's. Um, so if you wanted to do any kind of like basic styling, um, you can do the P tag, which basically bolds. Um, just bolds the word. Or if you wanted to emphasize DIY, you do EM around it. Um, test page. Yeah, so you can see here DIY is um, italicized. Um, yeah, so DIY is italicized and then synth is bolded. Um, so, like, that's about the amount of styling you want to do on a basic web page. Uh, oh. This is kind of like old school. If you wanted to make a break, you do an HR tag. Um, it stands for horizontal rule. And it, as you can see, there's a nice line in the middle. It's kind of falling out of favor, but if you ever wanted to, it's there. Um, the 90s are still alive, Patrick. <laughs> uh, OK, lists. We'll do so um, generally in your. I like to put um, navigation on my header tag just because I always feel like the header always has navigation and it's just nice for the users because when you're like content to change, but your header information wants to stay the same across websites. So we have this awesome tag called the nav tag. And it's just another like container. Um, and it's just like, you know, within these blocks is your navigation. Um, a lot of times, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it not done this way. Um, if you have a navigation, it's always a list of links. Um, so here, um, you can do UL, which stands for unordered list. And then in the ordered list, you have multiple LI, which is list elements. And this is how you do a list. Um, so like if I go here, it's empty right now, so um, at the very top, there's just, just this bullet. You can say home page, and then second page, page. And then you would also link them here. So, hey, here we go. Second page dot html. Um, so yeah, and then for your home page, you always um, generally in a website, it's always called an index dot html. Um, I'm pretty sure most servers um, they'll have like some kind of like Linux installation on them or something similar, and it'll say um, for this directory find the index and that's your home page. Um, so you can just link back to index.html. Um, I think I actually call this page test.html. So I'll just go ahead and change it to here. Um, actually. This is index. Save. And I'll just save this as index. And then, because we have test there. New page. You need to close your. Anchor. Oh, yeah. Close this. So we have home page. This is this page. And then, second page was the test page. Here it's changing. Um, um, so 
So with lists, you can also have ordered lists. So you can change this to OL, and that just numbers them. So uh, ordered list. There is a, you can change, like, if you wanted to do Roman numerals or Greek, um, or if you want to change your bullets to squares and discs. Um, you can do that, but we can go into that in CSS. Um, let's see, do we have more lists? Um, so back in the day, before we had the articles or the headers or the footers, we just had divs and spans. We still have them, um, so you can still use them. So if you wanted to, um, a lot of times you have like a div element that wraps your entire website. So I like it's a line. You can select all of it and just have ones and it just indents it. So basically, it's just like formatting more or less. A div is a block element, whereas a span is an inline. Um, and basically, what that means is if it's inline, it'll just put all the elements um, on one line. So, like the EM tag or V tag, those are inline, in which I won't like, force a return under it. Under it. Um, and block elements are like the P element um, in the div, and that basically forces it, the, like, the other elements in after it, to go onto a new line. So, you have your divs and you have your spans. Um, it doesn't do that much. Um, until we get to uh, CSS. That's when you really want to use them. Um, go to. Alright, so I guess, I think that's good. Um, yeah, so W3C, um, this is a really good resource. I like to use it. Um, since they are the ones who created the internet, they're really, you know, so I was very good them, right? Yeah, it's very, like, you know, very graphic, so they have a lot of um, documentation on it. Um, so this link um, basically is a reference. I go here a lot if I want, if I need to know about a document. Um, it's uh, dev.w3.org and then forward slash html5 forward slash markup forward slash spec.html. Um, I really like it if you go down here. You have all of the HTML, HTML elements that are available to you. Um, so if you wanted to learn about what is a what's an iframe, you can click it and it has the documentation on you know just a specific like what you can do with it more or less um, and the attributes that it's about and that sort of thing. So it's really it's like it's just a reference manual. I guess we'll go into CSS, um, change it up. So CSS is... Any questions on HTML, please? Okay. Oh, if you've ever, ever heard of... Um, HTML5 is the big buzzword right now in web programming. That's basically just, it's the fifth specification. Um, we have been working on... The last specification was in 1999, and that was HTML4. Um, and so it's really great. HTML5, I believe, is becoming standardized um, this year. Most browsers are encouraged to go ahead and um, standardize their browsers um, to the current standard. Uh, but IE, unfortunately, is very stuck in their ways. And so it's, they haven't quite caught on to the HTML5 yet since it, I think this year, just became standardized of if you're going to build a browser, it needs to be to these specifications. So a lot of times, a lot of programmers or designers, they won't worry about IE just because it is a pain and um, it really stifles creativity. Um, just because um, HTML5 has a lot of extra elements that you can do with it and um, it just makes it look awesome. So what in the website we just did is HTML5 specific? So what we did here in H that was HTML specific was um, this up here, the first part, the doc type. Um, it used to be horrendously complicated, in which you had to sort um, cite the W3C in their specification. It was, yeah, it, it was a mess. Um, I bet you can still find websites that do it. Um, and then, so header, header, nav, aside, article, 
those are all HTML5 footer. Um, there's a couple others. Like if you wanted to do audio, have music streaming on your website, or I mean playing on your website, or if you wanted video, there's a video tag. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. HTML5. What you can do, I have some links. Um, what's really fun is a. Uh, you can test your browser to see how well it is with the HTML5 standard. Google Chrome is 463 out of 500 points. Um, so across the board, it's pretty good. Um, there's not a lot that it doesn't get in the HTML5 standard. Um, if you do this in IE, it's horrendous. <laughs> the newest but versions of IE are better. IE10 is supposedly um, HTML5 compliant, um, but everything but, um, like for it if you're still using IE6. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no way. Um, really cool one. Um, Apple is really behind it. So basically with what came with HTML5 was this working group. And within this working group had a bunch of corporations like Google and Apple and you know this bunch of them. Um, more or less they wanted to like one of the things with it what they wanted to do was um, liberate the internet from Flash. Um, since Flash is um, owned by Adobe, and so it's like an Adobe product, and so like a lot of websites were like, yeah, we're gonna do Adobe, but or we're gonna do Flash, but it's just like that's the one software, you know. And so what they wanted to do was liberate the internet from that, and so they created the HTML5 and CSS3 standards, um, so that you can do that. So Apple, they're a big champion of, um, well, kind of big champion of open source and that sort of thing. Um, they have a showcase, which is kind of cool, like what you can do with HTML5 and CSS. Um, so it's kind of cool. You can like fade in, dissolve, whatever. And this is just all in like um, CSS and HTML, and it's not using Flash at all. So it's pretty cool. Um, they have like I think this part's pretty cool. The 360 view, you can like scroll and get a 360 of your product. Um, and it's all done in CSS and HTML. So. Cool. You might be a little bit of JavaScript involved. Um, Do you think that's all maybe. made? Yeah, yeah, you could be right. Mm -hmm. I think my, I'm not quite sure. I haven't looked lately since I've done it. Um, yeah, because I think you actually have to download um, some dev kits if you wanted to actually implement this. Like using their stuff, they give it to you. Oh, uh, yeah, so they're using JavaScript. Um, which I can which we'll all cover there. All right, I think that's good for now. Um, HTML5 rocks. That's just another website on HTML5 and how awesome it is. Um, it's a good resource just because it has like if you wanted to do gaming, um, there's a lot of libraries now that are trying to implement games in the browser using HTML5 and CSS. Um, 